trying to keep pace toward the top of the Big Ten standings. The Hawkeyes are in Value City Arena, and they are ready to square off against the defending Big Ten champion Ohio State Buckeyes on the annual Pink Day here at the shot. And with that, we say hello and welcome to Columbus alongside the Maryland Hall of Famer Christy Winter Scott. Mike Monaco on hand, and for as humble a superstar as Megan Gustafson is, so much of the conversation all day is about her and about how to slow her down. Well, she is the most efficiently dominant post player in the country this year. She leads the country in scoring with just over 27 points per game. She's coming off of a 41-point performance in her last contest against Michigan State, 17 of 24 from the floor. She averages 13 boards but she has scored 20 points in every game this season or more, except for one game where she scored 19, Mike. She, of course, is in the starting lineup, but Iowa is again without Mackenzie Meyer for a second straight game. Alexis Civilian starts on the Ohio State side. You saw Dorka Juhas. She's the freshman. She's going to go up against Megan Gustafson here in a series all-time that has been close between these two programs. Well, Dorka Juhas, she missed two games with a sprained ankle, but she is back and ready to battle it out. Juhas and Gustafson, that'll be a matchup all afternoon long. And Iowa on the road in the pink uniforms, ready to go offensively. Ohio State and Kevin McGuff said that they were going to mix up their defenses, try to give Gustafson a lot of different looks. But this is the team in Iowa that leads almost all the teams in the country. They're second in assists with 22 as Doyle's well, 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 well. Yeah, off a weak side offensive rebound from Hannah Stewart. So already a great start for that vaunted Iowa offense. Man-to-man -man defense last time for Ohio State. So you're going to see a lot of different looks of man, some junk zone defenses as well. We heard we might see some face guarding yes. even from Ohio State defensively. Yes, by their guards inside because you can't give Gustafson that lob. And she missed the first shot. They got the second one to go. I mean, she's shooting 70% from the floor, so she doesn't miss many of those in there. Yeah, you definitely can't give her a second chance as well. If she's going to miss one of those, you got to get the rebound. Yeah, it's like the old Moses Malone kind of basket. You know, you miss it, you get your own <laughs> rebound <laughs> over and over again. Ohio State turns it over, and we take a look at Mackenzie Meyer, who last Sunday against Penn State suffered the hyperextended knee. Don't expect to see her again today. Yeah, super scary. You see the brace there on her left knee with the hinges on the side for extra support. And Lisa Bluter said, no, she probably won't go today. Just try to get it to be 100%. I mean, at one point this season, she was leading the team in assists with five a game. Look what Gustafson found from Kathleen Doyle, and it's a 6 nothing start for Iowa. Well, Doyle has said that she has felt like she's in the best condition of the season after missing the first seven games with a leg injury. But she has averaged six assists in Big Ten play so far. Juhas draws a foul on Hannah Stewart. Lisa Bluter is a three-time Big Ten Coach of the Year, and this is a program that this season with the veterans, they have lofty goals in this conference and for a deep postseason run as well. Well, they have just been magnificent. And, you know, first year for Megan Gustafson, her freshman year, they didn't make the tournament. And then last year, getting into the tournament and not going as far as they wanted to go, I just think there's a lot of meat left on the bone for the Hawkeyes and Lisa Bluter. There's a lot left this season as well in the crowded Big Ten. Of course, a game going on today, Maryland Rutgers. That's a big one because those are the only two teams ahead of Iowa coming into today. Here's Lexi Civilian making her 11th start of the season in place of Meyer. And a foul will go against Megan Gustafson. Janae Crooms did a good job on the boards for Ohio State. Well, she also did a good job defensively on that possession on Megan Gustafson. Just watch how active she is. She's fronting her on that left block and then right here pulling down the rebound and Gustafson was still attached to the basketball. Some zone here by Iowa. 2-3 look. Doyle. Doyle nearly got a steal. Carly Santoro too strong. Grand transfer from Bowling Green. Ohio State, they were working on their zone offense, anticipating what they would see from Iowa. They were looking at those short corner and high post areas to attack with either a drive or put the ball there with the pass. Carmen Grande, not known for her perimeter shooting, left the three short. Here's Tanaya Davis, the senior guard. 
Well, both teams want to push pace. Iowa leads the Big Ten with 80 points per game. And Ohio State, Kevin McGuff said this morning at practice, hey, we've got to score the basketball. We don't want to slow pace and try to grind out a, a 55 to 58 game. We want to push with them, but we have to be able to score. And early in the season, it was that, the offense that at times was such a struggle for Ohio State, but they've really found more of it as this year's gone along. Well, it's chemistry. You know, they have a lot of grad students, but that doesn't mean they have the chemistry, but that's developed over the course of the season for sure. Kayla Waterman, who has been supplying scoring the last three games or so, she missed the jump shot, and it's a really cold start for Ohio State 0 of 5. Doyle, perhaps playing the best basketball she has all season, makes it an 8-0 start, and Kevin McGuff needs a timeout. 8 nothing, Iowa on the road in Columbus. Not allowing any breaths to be taken by Megan Gustafson. Look how active she is. Doesn't even really see the ball. She's just face guarding, and then right here fighting for the board, and Gustafson fouling on that play. It's frustrating when you have somebody yeah. doing that. You're not used to that. You want to bang. You want to get position. You want to hold your spot. But if someone's in front of you, you want to look for that lob. But they have someone up the line on the backside, which was Michaela Waterman. So you can't really get that lob if the backside of that is jammed up. So they're full fronting and jamming on the backside. And she wasn't even overly aggressive, Megan Gustafson. Yet that was still the first foul that she picks up here just a couple minutes into the first quarter. In that zone is Iowa 2-3. Ohio State trying to reverse the ball to the second side and get some action. Santoro, her shooting has improved as the season's gone along. You have to look to penetrate. You know, they're doing a good job of ball reversals, getting good passes. But when you get it to the wing, that wing has got to go ahead and try to attack those elbow areas to get the defense to collapse and change. Janae Crooms, the freshman from Rhode Island. Santoro, and it's a turnover. But that's that elbow penetration. That's a good idea. But now they see what they can get. Even though they missed that shot, turned it over with the travel, that's the kind of activity offensively they need. 1-2-2 two, two press here by Ohio State. Crooms taking away the middle. Lisa Bluter was worried about the press break. Crooms lays it in to start the scoring for the Buckeyes. She's just so smooth and competitively mature for a freshman. Gustafson with an athletic catch for Iowa to set things up. This is Tommy Taiwo, the freshman from Carmel, Indiana. He played quite a few more minutes in that win Thursday over Michigan State. 3-2 zone by Ohio State here. Really looking to disrupt Gustafson. Tough to do that. She's got a catch. She's got six already. Well, she steps right in front of you. And as a post player, you've got to be closer to the ball than the offensive player who wants the basketball. And right there, Waterman got stuck behind. And that's just barbecue chicken alert <laughs> if you're not ready to move your feet. Dorka Juhas is pretty athletic. She can move her feet. And she scores with a left hand around Gustafson. Yeah, we caught up with her today before the uh, game today in practice. And... Dorka Juhans was saying, yeah, I want to face up a little bit. I want to shoot threes. But she got inside and scored a post move there. Well, the first three for either side belongs to Tanaya Davis, the senior from Flint, Michigan. Good post passing between Waterman and Juhas. And Waterman is now 0 of 2. And she's coming off of a career-high 19 points in the last contest, and that was a great find by Dorka Juhas, being double-teamed on the block and finding Waterman wide open there. Strong drive, but the finish not there for Kathleen Doyle. And the Buckeyes, just as you said, they want to run. They want to push pace, but good job by Iowa to get back. Waterman missed it. Gustafson on the block. Davis fires a pass to Amanda Olinger. And draws a foul. All right, we welcome those of you who just watched Minnesota's win over Northwestern. We come to you from Value City Arena in Columbus with Christy Winter Scott 
Mike Monaco and Christy, all eyes on Megan Gustafson and the number 16 Iowa Hawkeyes. Gustafson, of course, the nation's leading scorer. She already has six, and I was up by nine. Well, she's the most efficiently dominant post player in the country. 27 points a game, Mike, coming off of a 41-point performance. She was 17 of 24 from the floor. I mean, she shoots 70% on the season, just under 13 boards, and she's seen every junk defense that you can think of. She's been double team, triple team, fronted, and she's always found a way. Against Penn State, she had five assists, so she has a pinpoint passing eye as well, and that just makes her that much more dangerous. Iowa second in the country with 22 assists per game. Ohio State, meanwhile, has had a cold start offensively. They went more than three minutes without points to start the ball game. Dorka Juhas is going to have her hands full with Megan Gustafson. She missed the jumper. Right, and she is a face-up player. She likes to get those mid-range shots. She could put it on the deck, too, and attack the freshman. is a tough match for Megan Gustafson as well, so it's going to be a good match on both sides. This is Tomi Taiwo, the freshman from Carmel, Indiana. She hits just her third collegiate three-pointer, and it prompts Ohio State to take a second timeout in this quarter. Well, well we've talked about Megan Gustafson, Christy, the six points, three rebounds already, and you talked about how teams are going to try to defend her. We're going to see a little bit of everything from Ohio State. Well, just watch here. Once she gets that front position right in front of the rim, that's a wrap. I mean, she has that baby hook down from her freshman season, studying the likes of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and the mechanics of the baby hook. She has perfected it now as a senior. You talked about the stat line from Thursday, and you also called her the most efficiently dominant post player in the country. We see the road to the Naismith there. Where do you think she stacks up or should be in the conversation for National Player of the Year? Well, she needs to be in more conversations. I do know that for sure. Megan Gustafson is shooting 70% from the floor and not that many players have ever done that. I don't care what position you play. If you have the game plan set to stop her and she is still able to control the game and impact the game as she does, she's got to be at the top of the list. Well, with her on the bench right now, Dorka Juhas has consecutive buckets. And she's got a rebound. Dorka Juhas, the freshman for Ohio State. Such an upside and a bright future for that young one. Another one of those talented freshmen for Ohio State. Janae Crooms missed the shot, and Jensen Coretti couldn't save it. Here's Kathleen Doyle, the junior guard who is playing the best she has played all season at this stage of the season. Well, she said that she has her legs under her after missing seven games earlier this season with a leg injury. But in Big Ten play, she's averaging six assists per game, so she has been extra efficient, especially when she has the likes of Megan Gustafson to pass it to. Peretti sticks the three Jensen for Peretti Ohio Peretti State. Peretti. It's first make from beyond the arc. Jensen Coretti and Michaela Waterman, the two longest tenured Buckeyes for Kevin McGuff. It's good to see Coretti getting Peretti. off offensively. Monica, good to see a bucket on the inside from Monica Sinano, the freshman from Minnesota. Boy, that looked a lot like Megan Gustafson <laughs> on the interior. Well, she's probably seen a lot of that from <laughs> Megan in practice and decided to simulate that. Gustafson will simulate Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. <laughs> Let's she'll go ahead and simulate Gustafson. Yeah, it's a trickle effect. There you go. Lisa Bluter is the head coach, of course, for Iowa, her 19th season at the helm. And it's a group that still has a lot to play for, of course, this season. They are right in the thick of things atop the Big Ten. Maryland got the win over Rutgers today, so now Iowa and Rutgers are both 9-3. and three. Well, I asked Lisa Bluter prior to the game how it is to play with a team that is so unselfish with the basketball, and she said, we celebrate the pass. We don't say, hey, that was a good shot. We celebrate the pass. Giving up the good shot for the great shot is what Iowa has been able to do extremely well this season. So when you have that kind of atmosphere where it's a selfless environment, a selfless culture, you have success. And that's why they're ranked 16th in the country. They are second in the country in assists per game. And so far, they have assists on five of their eight field goal makes in these first nine minutes. Kathleen Doyle has said, we get so excited when we see our teammates score. And Megan Gustafson said, I think we get more excited about the pass. That, oh my God, it was a good pass, rather than the shot going down. And you see it in their reactions, too. That's not just speak and, and cliches. Well, that's the way the game should be played. Shot clock winding down in the violation on Iowa. Stingy Ohio State defense. 
Yeah, staunch defensive effort on that possession by Ohio State. Michaela Waterman told us today in practice, hey, Iowa averages 80 points a game to lead the Big Ten Conference in scoring. What are you going to do to disrupt that? And she said, we pride ourselves on defense. And she is the leader on this team. And she has implored her teammates to buckle down and be ready to compete against a team like Iowa. There's a foul on Hannah Stewart, and that's her second here. Kevin McGuff has had a different group this year, of course, in his sixth season at the helm. But remember, they started 0-3 in the Big Ten and were the last conference team to get a league win. They've won six of nine since. Well, he said they've just gotten better because they are so new to each other. Yes, they have six players as grad students. Michaela Waterman's back in a different starting role with more minutes on the floor. So everyone has really gained that chemistry over the course of the season, and it's really paying off for them well. They're winners of three of their last four games. Double dribble called on Lexi Civilian, and it's back-to-back -back turnovers on each side. The Civilian picked it up, put it right back down. I think she thought the passing lane closed down on her. And tried to save the possession and ended up losing it. Iowa sitting in that 2-3 zone trying to clog up things for Ohio State and make it difficult to score on the outside, which they haven't really shot the ball that well from the outside. Ohio State's got a chance to get it down to single digits here at the end of the first quarter. Six seconds, Coretti, a deep one off the mark. Here's Tanaya Davis, good if it goes. Wide left to end the first 10 minutes here in Columbus, Ohio. Megan Gustafson off to a fast start, six points, four rebounds, Christy. Well, it's no mystery. Megan Gustafson inside, 70% shooter. That's a bucket. To themselves right there, and there are a lot of awesome pink games and traditions around the country, not just in this conference. That's pretty darn neat. Well, it's bigger than basketball. And that's what I love about it. I mean, sports, we love playing them. We love watching them. But really, the common denominator is the selflessness, the team, and everything that that encompasses. So to wear the pink is, is more than just one little splash in the pan situation. It's something that is very meaningful and very profound. We lost one of the warriors in the game of women's basketball in Kay Yao several years back. And for the Play for K initiative to still be thriving and drawing attention to awareness of that crazy disease of breast cancer, we just have to be thankful for the platform that women's basketball has afforded. And I think it, it never gets old. There are so many of these games in the month of February, yet it's always such a special cause, and there are different ways to do it. Different ways to do it, and you, you heard all the names, so different people to play for. So we start the second quarter. Ohio State gets a bucket from Aaliyah Patty, a backup big. We'll just watch Crooms right here. A nice dime underneath to Patty. Patty gathers with the power dribble and finishes on the opposite side. Nicely executed by Ohio State. Dorka Juhas has two fouls for Ohio State, so she's on the bench. Anna Stewart has two fouls for Iowa. So more minutes for Amanda Olinger and the Hawkeyes. Well, obviously that changes the rotation when players get into foul trouble and come in a little sooner than you would want them to, and you have different lineups on the floor, so it changes what kind of defensive schemes you can run, offenses as well. And again, no Mackenzie Meyer for Iowa for a second consecutive game with the knee injury. Well, she sprained that knee, and she did warm up today, but is not in action. Carmen Grande had a back tap by Lexi Civilian. Doyle pushes. Fouled. And will head to the free throw line. Well, that's what Iowa wants to do. 80 points a game. They get a lot of them in transition. And that's when Kevin McGuff said, hey, we have to take care of the basketball, knowing that fact. Knowing that my ball turnovers turn into easy offense on the other side for Iowa. Doyle, the junior from LaGrange Park, Illinois, coming off a very good game in that big win for Iowa on Thursday. 18 points, 8 assists, 7 rebounds, and she shot it quite confidently from deep. Yeah, and that's what Lisa Bluter told us today at practice, that Kathleen Doyle was playing with a high level of confidence on the defensive end as well. And usually that's what fuels your offensive confidence is when you go hard and dig down, bear down on the defensive side of things. Carmen Grande checks out for Ohio State, so Janae Cruz runs the point for the Buckeyes. Patty couldn't 
finish through the contact inside. And Gustafson got caught on the high side there and really had to fight for that rebound and the control of it afterwards with the dribble. Gustafson out on the perimeter. Gets it right back. Gustafson follows her miss. Missed it again. Yeah, tough angles there on both shots by Megan Gustafson, but good contest by Patty on the interior. Patty can't score on the reverse. Physical post play on both sides. And fans looking for fouls on both sides also. Olinger along two swirls out, and Waterman clears it. Both teams playing zone defense. So look for quicker ball reversals and attacks from the wing area. That's what you want to do. You want to get right into that elbow area. What a pass from Janae Crooms to her fellow freshman, Aliyah Patty. Freshman to freshman. You got to love that great chemistry and a great eye by Janae Crooms. She says, forget about the wing. Forget about the dribble drive. I'm going to fire this one in there. Crooms in transition on the step through the finish. Foul on the perimeter goes on Ohio State. This isn't too hard. This is our State Farm assist of the game. Look at Janae Crooms. I see you and you see me. Connect the dots. Great pass right downstairs for the strong finish. Watch this. Laser beam to Patty Poole. Great catch. Two hands right in the pocket. You know, in hockey, they say you got to keep your stick on the ice. If you're a post player, you got to keep your hands up there. The pass is coming. You might not know it. Yeah, you don't want to get hit in the grill. You know, that's the worst thing. I've heard, I've heard anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not first day of well, experience for well, I <laughs> Tania Davis, too strong. So all of a sudden, Ohio State has this down to a five-point game just three minutes into the second quarter. Well, they've played great defense, and they've kept the ball out of the hands of Megan Gustafson, and when she has caught it on the inside, they've made it very difficult for her to find rhythm on back-to-back -back possessions on the defensive end. Adriana Miller, one of the grad transfers for Ohio State, doesn't get the roll. It's a good strong take, though. Get into the teeth of that zone and really force them to change what it looks like. Davis too firm. A weak side offensive rebound by Amanda Olinger. She played good minutes off the bench as part of it was a makeshift rotation for Iowa Thursday. New Haas and Gustafson are battling on that ball side block. Gustafson did a good job of not letting that pass get inside. Doyle rises. She hit four threes Thursday, the loose ball to Cruz. Waterman mixing it up in there. Cruz, another good find to you, How about the swagger from the freshman, Janae Cruz? All the swagger and the moxie playing some fun basketball out here as Ohio State. Janae Crooms with another dime drop to Dorka Juhas for the finish. That is brought to you by State Farm, here to help life go right. Talk to a State Farm agent today. We're at Value City Arena, and Ohio State is on a 6-0 run. Janae Crooms has been such a big part of it. Janae Crooms, I'm a fan. These freshmen have come into the Big Ten ready to play. Watch this great pass right there to Dorka Juhas in transition. What a superb find. You could just tell she saw from the corner of her eye that she had the sliver of light to make the play. And then defensively in the passing lanes in their 1-2-2 press. And then watch this. Take the Euro to Paris and the drop in by Crooms. She's just tough minded. I love watching her play and the reaction and the passion to go along with all that swag is fun to watch as well. It is really fun and it's refreshing to see a freshman look that confident yeah. and comfortable on the floor. Yeah, and that's what she has gained over the course of the season and she said that even though she got by right there, defensively let it go, but Kevin McGuff has given her a lot of confidence and that's what she said. Her teammates have given her that confidence as well by putting her on the floor and guiding her when she's out there. Yeah, Kevin McGuff framed it to us today that she can feel herself getting better yes. and that motivates her. And that's what coaches talk about when they talk about confidence. Absolutely. There's a deep three from Adriana Miller, the grad transfer from the South. It's a nice swing, swing of the basketball.
basketball by Ohio State. Got back into the game because of their defense, and now their offense has been clicking with a good rhythm their last several offensive possessions. Hannah Stewart is playing with two fouls for Iowa. She goes excellently with the high low to Gustafson. Well, you got to love the high low pass, post to post. Post players know one another. They know the angles. They know where to put the basketball. And a great look there by Stewart to Gustafson downside. Eight and six for Megan Gustafson. With the double double today, will tie Jantel Lavender for the Big Ten record. That was a block by Gustafson on Carly Santoro. And Janae Crooms strokes the three. of a stat line for Crooms. Taiwo too strong. Gustafson the rebound. Doyle shuffled the feet. Turnover number five by Iowa. Back in for the Buckeyes. Well, Megan Gustafson right here. You just see her footwork. She had the initial baseline seal, but when the ball went high post, she spun quickly and got that lob availability with her seal on the other side. Her Hawkeyes are up by one with less than four to go until halftime. There's Miller driving from the wing like you've talked about, but she missed it at the rim. Okay, Gustafson disrupted that, even though she didn't block it like she did on the last defensive possession, but she got in the way. Second foul on the interior on Aaliyah Patty fighting for post position with Hannah Stewart. Well, you've got to stay loose. That's the key as a post defender. You don't want to give the offensive player all the body contact. They want to seal you and get you deeply buried into the paint. Stewart gets the roll. Her first points. She has had such a great senior season. Oh, she has. She has really been magnificent in terms of playing right alongside a player like Megan Gustafson, a great complementary player to her in terms of her offensive abilities. Brooms threaded that pass. Waterman, one more find, and it's Patty on the receiving end. We were talking about passing angles post to post. That was a tough bounce pass by Waterman there. We talked a lot about Iowa celebrating the assist. That's what they call it. Ohio State's got a lot of celebrating to do. Yeah, great connections that they're making because of their great spacing against the zone. Shoveled off Patty from Cruz. First lead for the Buckeyes. Davis kicks it out, Doyle. Rebound, Cruz. And a foul on Iowa, which thought it might have a steal. Janae Crooms already has the season high with six assists. Well, Ohio State right now, they have eight assists on the afternoon because of their fantastic spacing against the zone. A superb bounce pass there by Waterman inside to Patty. So when you have that great spacing, Mike, what that does, it spreads the defense out. You have to honor the outside. You have to take away the drive. So when you rotate the defense, that's when you get the pockets of available players right inside the painted area. Another deep one for Miller, way off the mark. Yeah, and Lisa Bluter was somewhat concerned with Ohio State and how they match up against Iowa because they can all shoot and they can spread you out and drive too. Right, and that's the thing. You know, she said that Ohio State was like an international style team. They can all face, all five of them can face up and score, whether it be off the bounce or from a pass and shoot. So it makes it tough to match up man to man, which is why we've seen a lot of zone from Iowa early. Doyle feeds the post this time, and the foul is on the floor. And that is three fouls now on Aaliyah Patty. So it means that Dorka Juhas has to get off the bench, and she has two fouls. Well, they don't have a lot more depth than that on the interior for Ohio State. So they've got to really challenge themselves to stay foul-free and be completely disciplined on the defensive end. Right hand this time for Gustafson, and she's into double figures. Plus a smart play by Iowa, knowing that Juhas has those two fouls to go right at her on that inbounds play. That's very strategic. Juhas can't take a foul right there. She can't take away what 
Gustafson did on that play, which is get her to the back to the basket and finish it. It's two games in a row that Iowa's opponent has been in foul trouble because that was such an issue for Michigan State, Jenna Allen and company on Thursday. Yeah, Jenna Allen only had two points in that contest and fouled out. Megan Gustafson, 41 huge points in that contest to go along with 14 rebounds, 17 of 24 shooting for Gustafson in that game. Just outstanding. I just, you know, I can't say it enough. I, mean, I hope we're not the only ones talking about it. Grooms was trying to hop to set that up. Doyle swiped it and lays it in. Plus a foul. Uh, yes. Let them know about it. I, I love the passion. And it's not a taunting situation. It's a passion situation. Right here. Grooms trying to go behind the back or something like that. And Doyle said, no, we're going to go the other way. And I'm going to take this contact and finish it. And then afterwards, you see the fire and the love of the game coming out. She just exudes passion, and I just love that. If efficiency is the word of choice for Megan Gustafson, yes. I think moxie is the word we always hear for Kathleen Doyle. Oh, no question about it. I mean, she's playing with a high level of confidence, and she's just been so impactful, especially on the offensive end. I mean, we saw the steal and score right there, but the way that she creates offense for her team, I mean, you already discussed how they're second in the country with 22 assists a game. She's a main reason for that. She runs the team, and that's what Lisa Bluter has said as well. I mean, she's a great conductor of this offense. Brooms misses the jumper, and hey, by the way, it was the second foul on Waterman. So Waterman and Juhas with two, Patty with three. And they're sticking with that 3-2 zone as well to try to counter those foul issues now that they have on the interior. Iowa has led by as many as 13 in this first half. Iowa State came back to grab the lead. Four-second difference between game and shot clocks. Waterman battling Gustafson on the inside. Davis just missed it from deep. Final few seconds. Coretti. And no shot for the Buckeyes, who trailed by four headed to halftime. Thirty-one twenty-seven is the Iowa lead on Ohio State here in Columbus. Back and forth we have gone. It's the Hawkeyes on the road, up by four on the Buckeyes. Elise Menneker and Bobby Kelsey are in our Chicago studios with the halftime report right after these messages. We had all eyes on Megan Gustafson, the star here in Columbus. Her Hawkeyes led by as many as 13. She has 10, but it's a four-point game as we gear up for the second half. And welcome you back, Christy Winter, Scott, Mike Monaco here. How did Ohio State get back into this? Well, they got back into it because they buckled down on the defensive end. They got the stops necessary. They got live ball turnovers and push tempo for easy offensive opportunities. But Janae Grooms really got things cooking offensively. Six assists for the freshman just one turnover. Yeah, and at the outset, it was Gustafson and the Hawkeyes who built a big lead, as you might expect. Well, the most efficiently dominant post player in the country coming in, shooting 70% from the floor. Back to those kind of efficient, impactful ways on the offensive end for Iowa. Five of eight from the floor for Gustafson, who was right on the precipice of her 77th career double-double. On the other side, Crooms, the seven points, the six assists, four rebounds, and she's only turned it over once. I just love the smooth game of Janae Crooms. Six assists, just one turnover, three of five shooting from the floor, but just look at the precision of which she passes the ball. Just great connectivity with her teammates. They've been the Sunday stars so far. Gustafson, one rebound away from her 77th career double-double, which will tie the Big Ten record set by someone who played a lot here in Jantel Lavender. And then Crooms on the other side has Ohio State within four. Yeah, Jantel Lavender, she had 19 player of the week awards in the Big Ten, and Gustafson just cracked that code and now she has broken that record with 20 player of the week awards in her career i'm gonna give you a spoiler too regardless of what happens today you might be able to pencil her in on monday too <laughs> hey we need a sharpie i mean it's just every <laughs> single week just the consistency is most impressive by megan gustafson there's gustafson who kicks it out good extra pass from doyle stewart beat the horn didn't get the bucket and the ball belongs to the buckeyes Good hustle there, but you see Iowa struggling to gain possession. 
of the basketball. You know, they take the shot clock all the way down to the end. They already had a shot clock violation earlier, and that's a testament to Ohio State's defensive pressure. Ohio State has held Iowa to 39% shooting from the floor. An Iowa team that is second in the country in field goal percentage behind only Oregon at better than 52%. Well, a lot of those are great interior passes to Gustafson, who has not had as many touches as she normally has. Five of eight is very pedestrian-like in terms of touches for Gustafson inside. If you're just tuning in, we told you that Ohio State would try a variety of things defensively as Waterman gets the kick. And that Kevin McGuff hoped to settle into something that right. was working and then roll with that the rest of the way. Well, that's what you want to see. I mean, for a coach, it's kind of a Rubik's Cube, if you will, when you're playing defense, which one is going to work the best? So you've got to throw out a couple different looks and then chart which ones are the most efficient. Right now, it's Juhas on Gustafson, the freshman on the senior. Gustafson gets the bucket and a chance at three. Well, that's the danger of not moving on the pass against the zone. If you wait until the pass is made and then try to deny passes on the interior, you're going to be late. Right here, the ball is passed, and Waterman, you saw a step late. You can't be a beat late. You can't be a half a beat late when it comes to denying touches to Megan Gustafson right under the basket. You've got to move on the pass. That's just that important. And to add insult to injury, it's now three fouls on Michaela Waterman. And remember, Aliyah Patty, who comes off the bench, she has three. Juhas has two. Waterman, the longest tenured Buckeye under the tutelage of Kevin McGuff. They need her presence on the court. And maybe she's not scoring at a career-high clip today, but they need her presence out there and her vocal leadership. Iowa is on an 8-0 run dating back to the end of the second quarter. Denia Davis with the post feed that got deflected. Civilian, a bit too ambitious looking for Gustafson. Well, Gustafson had nowhere to go on that catch. She had three people surrounding her defensively on the catch right here. She gets it and then look, nowhere to go. They had her feet trapped there on the block and she had to kick it back out. She's boxed in. There's so much traffic around her and it doesn't help Iowa's case that the Hawkeyes haven't shot it well from deep, just two of 12. Right, it makes it a little tougher. Juhas ran into a lot of tall bodies on the block. Civilian feeds Stewart with the left hand. Great use of the body by Stewart on the inside. Just rolling off the body of the defender and finishing on the opposite side of the hoop. It's a 5-0 run for Iowa to start the third quarter and the Iowa lead swells. Well, watch this. Hannah Stewart right here rolling. And finishing. Most Big Ten Player of the Week honors in conference history. She's got a double-double today as well. Now she has tied the Big Ten record, set by Chantel Lavender for most double-doubles. Yeah, 77 double-doubles now for Megan Gustafson. But while Chantel Lavender, what a strong talent she was here for the Buckeyes, currently playing in the WNBA for the Los Angeles Sparks, was sixth player of the year a couple seasons back. So she is still thriving, but just speaking of thriving, Megan Gustafson inside with a passionate finish with contact on the inside. And she does her work early, just kind of drifts right into a great angle, knows she has great position, and takes it up and finishes with contact. Just extremely efficient, extremely dominant, and it's just tough to guard a player like that. And you know what she's going to do, and with her ability to continue to do it at the rate that she does it is most impressive indeed. There are more Jantel Lavender records that impact Megan Gustafson as well. Right now, Gustafson is second all-time in conference history in rebounds. Lavender's first in a long postseason run. Who knows? Gustafson might have a chance to catch Jantel Lavender. Right, and coming into this game, Gustafson had 2,429 points, the most for men or women, and two more for her right there, most for men and women in Iowa history, passing Ali Disterhoff and Roy Marble but the hands inside. She had her paws ready for the basketball on that one. Wow. 12-0 run makes it an 11-point Iowa lead. Miller falling away. A much-needed bucket for Ohio State. Three and a half minutes into the second half. Davis fires one in. Gustafson good on the second effort. 
<laughs> she said, my bad. <laughs> to Tania Davis up top. And Tania Davis looked at her like, what's happening? Hey, messing up my assist numbers right there. And through your great pass, you don't miss those. <laughs> Tania misses out on an assist. Megan gets a rebound added to yeah, the well, yeah. <laughs> Post payoff. Miller's got a three, and that's her second today in the fourth for the Buckeyes. Doyle raced back the other way and draws a foul. Well, when you're a post player and guards want to get you the basketball, they have to trust your hands. And wow, the hands of Megan Gustafson, tremendous, great catch. Keeps the ball nice and high. It's Mike and Drill-esque on the finish. It's not her first rodeo. It's like a tight end right there, just catching and keeping it high and finishing inside. George Kittle-esque from Megan Gustafson, who's got 17 and 11. <laughs> George Kittle. Santoro on the takeaway. A hard fall for Janae Crooms getting back in transition defense. And Doyle makes the Buckeyes pay. Three point four. She high five. Three Lisa Bluter on the way back, feeling the momentum swinging in their favor because of their consecutive possessions where they've come up on the scoring end. We said they were shooting sub 40%, which is a rarity for the Hawkeyes. Well, now they've hit five of their last six from the floor. Well, they needed to get those three-point shots to go. They were not hitting those in the first half. That's been the beauty and the balance of their offense, the ability to hit their shots on the outside, shooting 35% coming into this game is Iowa. So that kind of balances things out. So now with those shots falling from the outside, it's going to loosen some things up on the inside because you're going to have to honor those shots. Aaliyah Patty drew the third foul on Hannah Stewart. Patty's the freshman from Lombard, Illinois. Well, some subs on both sides here. Alexis Civilian checks in for Hannah Stewart. And Carmen Grande is back into the game as well. And we haven't seen as much Carmen Grande. Only 11 minutes for her so far because of how well Janae Crooms has run the offense. Oh, exactly. I mean, you have a player in Grande who has 803 assists coming into this game. She creates a lot of offense, but Crooms has been incredibly efficient in terms of finding her teammates in open areas against the zone. Sonano the finish, and she will go to the free throw line. And again, the late rotation on the pass. You cannot pause and be a ball watcher and then rotate. When the ball is in the air, it's not going to change trajectory in midair. You know that it's over there, so that should automatically pull you towards the ball. And Kroom's right there just a step too late and creates that contact for the finish inside. It's just the first foul on Janae Crooms, and it plants Sonano at the free throw line. Lisa Bluter's team up by 13 midway through this third quarter. Into the Buckeyes, Nelson Quinlan, replacing Janae Crooms. Sonano's only 7 of 15 at the free throw line so far in her collegiate career. She can't stamp it. Waterman's got the board. Ohio State really needs to look to move the basketball, especially now with Carmen Grande in there trying to direct the traffic offensively and trying to get the best shot for the team. The freshman Juhas and Crooms are both on the bench for Ohio State. And it's the veteran Waterman who draws the foul on Sonano. Ohio State trying to get the offense going here at home midway through the third. First, the Gophers off their big overtime win here on BTN. They take on the Boilermakers. Then the number 10 Turfs off a win today against Rutgers host the Huskers. Big 10 women's basketball Thursday right here on BTN and the Fox Sports app.
told you, Carmen Grande is back into the game for an Ohio State team looking to get its offense in gear. And in Grande, it's a veteran player who makes her 118th career start today and the most active assist of anyone right now, male or female in college basketball. Yeah, it's just tremendous coming in with 803 assists. Zero assists today, however. But the top five assist makers in the Big Ten Conference right now are playing in this game with Kathleen Doyle, Tania Davis, and Carmen Grande. So you have big playmakers on the floor, but Grande, she needs to get going. Zero assists for her. She's looking to get back on the right side of things in terms of her assist numbers. Well, Patty scores. She does that all on her own around the pivot. A nice strong finish in there. She's been in foul trouble. They need her presence on the interior to balance things out for Ohio State. She's played well. She's into double figures with 10, and now it's an 11-point game. Tania Davis, it's a tie-up, and it goes back to Ohio State. Leah Patty trying to get things going for Ohio State, trying to create some offense, gets stuck. Couldn't get all the way to the rim, but she's so long and lanky, she can use that little ball fake and stretch those limbs out and finish right at the rim anyway without utilizing a dribble. She didn't score last time out on Wednesday against Penn State and played a season low in minutes because Dorka Juhas was back in the starting lineup. Patty kicks it out to Naja Queenland, too firm. Look at the presence in terms of the defensive pressure by Ohio State. They've got a high side defender and then someone on the baseline side as well with a high hand in the passing lane. Tough to get an entry pass there. Civilian with another risky post feed and Waterman got a piece of it. And let's see who the foul's on. I was just discussing the defensive attention that Gustafson has earned. But right here, Waterman not loose enough. That's her fourth foul, but right here trying to get around. It looks like Gustafson was the one creating the contact there, not Waterman. She was trying to stay loose. And then Gustafson gets the bucket on the inbound to make matters worse for Ohio State. Yeah, nevertheless, Michaela Waterman frustrated right now sitting on the bench with those four fouls. Patty's got three fouls, Juhas with two. Patty can't connect from deep, and it goes back to the Hawkeyes. We had fun chatting with Michaela Waterman today, and she wants to be a coach, and she has some coaching in her bloodlines, and we asked her, if you were the head coach of your team today, how would you defend against Megan Gustafson? And she said, it's the versatility that stands out with Gustafson. You've got to change it up defensively. Yeah, you got to show her different looks, bigs and smalls on her, switch her out, face guard. And that's what we've seen so far. Michaela Waterman's grandfather, the first African-American coach in the Big Ten. Juhas has the rebound for Ohio State. Doyle nearly picked off the pass. Miller on the reverse. Earns a trip to the free throw line. Nobody stopped the baseline drive, and that's a basketball 101 defensive error. You've got to put your foot on the baseline and send the person with the ball back out of the painted area without making contact. So that's getting there before they arrive and essentially turning them back. So you've got to give space. Well, Ohio State is 0 of 5 from the free throw line now, and it's a Buckeyes team that is second worst in the conference in free throw percentage at 67 for the year. And that makes it difficult, especially in the close games that they've had, and they haven't been able to close those out, and you look back at the free throw numbers and you see that that's where they left a lot of meat on the bone when it comes to point production and possessions. You know, free throws aren't possessions. You can't leave those untouched. Davis back in for Doyle. Let's see what Ohio State can do with some of its three-quarters court pressure. And they like that 1-2-2, two, two, and they fall right back into their zone. It's a 3-2 zone here, sticking with that. High low, Stewart connects with Gustafson. And there's just nothing better you can do defensively on that except for maybe give a little bit more ball pressure. But that is just a tough catch and finish by Gustafson inside, and... 
Dorka Yuhas, bless her heart. I mean, the freshman, she's right there trying to do her best to deny touches, but couldn't get it. Cruz floats one home, her first points this quarter. Davis and the Hawkeyes back quickly. That's why they average 80 points a game to lead the Big Ten. And they push tempo even after a made basket. You've got to sprint back and recover. And that's what Lisa Bluter said. She wanted to test the defensive transition of Ohio State. Santoro secures the offensive rebound off the Juhas miss. I mean, you're in a 3-2 zone. You're on an island with the top scorer in the country. And it's just automatic for Megan Gustafson inside. Another 20-point game for Gustafson. Queenland off the bounce. Couldn't wrap it around successfully to Juhas. Well, that's just a tough place to try to make a play. There's no space there, so you can't force space to occur. If it's not there, it's not there. You have to make the next best pass. Nice find, Davis to Gustafson. <laughs> she was wondering if that was going to go in. <laughs> Davis was looking at her like, there you go, because last time I threw one like that in there, it didn't go in initially. Quinlan, no. Stewart the board. If there's one thing I miss as a player is that kind of camaraderie with a teammate, you know, just the, the shared smiles. Gustafson with a right hand this time. She is cooking. Yeah, with some hot fish grease and some more stuff in there. My goodness. I mean, she just makes herself available to the basketball, and her teammates know exactly where to find her. She had 41 Thursday. She's got 25 more today. Mercy. Got a nine-second difference between game and shot clocks. Santoro is scoreless. Shot clock off. Davis dives for it. Gets it to Stewart. Civilian rises and hits. How about the effort from the Hawkeyes already with a lead, working hard, headed toward the fourth. Well, Iowa's practice shirt said grit on the front of it. Davis, a gritty pass right there, and Civilian with some grit and some strength music from three. How many Hawkeyes does it take to fit four suitcases in a trunk? This is like the <gasps> We've arrived at the bus. Hey! Time to head to the airport. This is where you build it, right? Absolutely. On the road trips, it's the best time of the year with your teammates sharing the travel stories and the soul train lines on the bus and everything like that. It's it's awesome stuff. And those are the memories that you make and that you never forget. See, there they go. The soul train line on the bus. Not a lot of space, but you do with it what you can. And it's, it's just a blast. And the camaraderie like that carries over to the court, especially for Iowa being ranked 16th. But you can just feel the, the camaraderie with this squad and the, the cohesiveness, if you will, with their chemistry on the court. Would you have been filming or would you have been Hannah Stewart dancing? <laughs> I would have been filming and dancing. <laughs> That'd be a selfie video Isn't for that me the on truth? that. <laughs> Start of the fourth quarter, Davis no good from three. Well, things really spiraled on Ohio State in the third quarter. They allowed 27 points and they only scored 10. Well, I think they just struggled mightily in terms of getting any kind of a connection on the offensive end that they had, especially in that second quarter when Cruz kind of went to work and was finding her teammates with those six first half assists to only one turnover. So I just think that Iowa came out of the locker room a little more focused on the defensive end and locked in. They do turn it over here. I told you that Maryland knocked off Rutgers earlier today. So Maryland is now 11-2 in the conference. Rutgers is 9-3. That's where Iowa's record is coming into today. And the only meeting between Iowa and Maryland is coming down the pike not too far from now, one week from today. All right, and that Maryland-Rutgers game was a rematch. Rutgers uh, upset Maryland earlier in the season. And then Iowa snapped Rutgers' 10-game win streak earlier this season, too. So it's been a topsy-turvy Big Ten conference 
this season, and it's really been a lot of fun to see how things have evolved, and it's going to be an exciting tournament, to say the least, in Indianapolis. Well, Waterman has the turnaround, and those are her first points today as she's been saddled with foul trouble. Yeah, she had 18 points a couple of games ago and then had two, and then another career high with 19 in the last contest. So a little inconsistency from Waterman on the offensive end, not for lack of trying, but like you said, when you have four fouls in the third quarter, it impacts how you play the game. She has battled so many injuries throughout her career. And she was telling us today that her parents still say to her that they're shocked she's able to steep, keep going with how many injuries she's had. Yeah, and she is bruised up. I mean, she just stays so positive. She said, my legs are so sore. I have bruises up and down my legs. But I want to play. I love the game that much. And I want to be able to help the culture here by staying on board and really talking these young players through what it takes to win. Stewart, an offensive rebound. And a fresh 30 for Iowa. And something funny that Kevin McGuff said, like, you know, you asked him, can they simulate Megan Gustafson as Iowa throws the ball away there? And he said, no, we can't do that. We, you know, we have practice players in there. They have a guy, you know, Chris Strickland, one of their 6'5 practice players to work with the team. And he doesn't have a left hand, you know, Gustafson is left handed, but he tried so hard to go to his left. And to well, he literally male. does. <laughs> but we're right, but it's not very effective. And uh, the players say, hey, especially Michaela Waterman, she said it doesn't matter if he misses that shot. That's what Gustafson is going to do. So we've got to take that away. Waterman has a three. Just her eighth of the season, and she's starting to get going. Ohio State within 16. Well, that's that fire of a senior. And when you have a player like Waterman who has battled through injury, this is her last go-round. She sees the light at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes that adrenaline carries you further than you think. Second triple from Lexi Civilian. Uh, extra pass there by Iowa really makes the basketball game look beautiful. And that's what you have to do. Swing, swing, bucket. Waterman was just clapping at Crooms. She wanted the basketball. Missed the shot, tie up, stays at this end. How about this perimeter passing we've seen from this, this Iowa team? Well, this is why Waterman was clapping for the ball because she knows how important the extra pass is. And right here on the reversal, you get a nice look by Civilian from three against the zone. And that's why Iowa sits at the top of the list in the Big Ten for assist to turnover ratio. They know where to put the basketball. They know how to move the basketball and why to put the ball where. A lot of coaches look at the percentage of field goal mix on which there was an assist. And in that category, Iowa, fourth in the country. Yeah, I mean, that's just insanely good. And that just speaks volumes to the culture that Lisa Bluter has created for her team. And the buy-in by the players. It doesn't matter if the coach wants that. The players have to execute it. That's some angle for Gustafson in very deep, nearly under the hoop. She's up to 27. Waterman drives and kicks. Gustafson with her 15th rebound. Well, you can't get it all back at once, and Ohio State can't settle for just the outside shot. They have to do what they did in that first half, which was penetrate to the elbow area, collapse the zone, and hit the back side. Nice dump off to Doyle. Waterman commits the foul, and that'll end her day with 5.59 left. Waterman with those five fouls now will have to go and take a seat for the Buckeyes, unfortunately for them, and their leadership piece, but... Watch Megan Gustafson right here. Catches that spin. You've got that baseline seal and then just the quick spin of the feet. Her teammates know exactly what she's going to do. And she does it so well. Just great passing eye there, too. And the foul by Waterman on that one. And Doyle will go to the line. And Gustafson gets a breather here. And look at Iowa's assist numbers. 19 assists on 27 made shots, and Waterman, an invaluable piece for Kevin McGuff on the court. After Doyle split at the line, here's Ohio State setting up offensively. 
Sunday missed it. And that was just a microcosm of what has gone wrong offensively for Ohio State in the second half. When you want to get to the basket, but you're not finishing. Nice step through by Miller. And she'll go to the free throw line with the foul on Tony Tywin. Well, you can tell. And they kind of look up and said, hey, let's not take these outside shots every single time. I mean, and if it's there, you have it, take it. Well, let's make some of them, too. But if you don't have that, let's penetrate. Let's get into the painted area. Let's force the defense to make choices on how they're going to cover the drive. Kevin McGuff. McGuff, yeah, he was saying to us, Christy, that we've got to score enough to keep pace right. with Iowa. And obviously, the defense is important. They did it early on, especially in the second quarter, but right. it hasn't carried over in the second half. Yeah, it hasn't carried over, and, I, you know, they kind of gone away from what was successful for them in that second quarter, which was that penetration, and Kevin McGuff likes that drive and cut behind system offensively, but we really haven't seen that here in the second half. Doyle. Draws a foul after she got by Janae Cruz. Well, here are the standings in the Big Ten. Updated. Maryland had the big win over Rutgers, which falls back to 9-3. and three. Iowa gets the win. We've had a lot of movement as well. Michigan State will play tomorrow, and there's that big group around seven and six right in that middle. Maybe those top three teams separating themselves a little bit. Yeah, it's just interesting to see, especially how everyone started out at Big Ten and then battling and beating one another. But at the preseason polling time during the season, Maryland was picked number one overall, and Iowa was right behind them at number two. So things are kind of becoming like that, and Rutgers with those 10 consecutive victories before Iowa beat them a couple of weeks back. I mean, they have been playing some fantastic basketball, leading the Big Ten and rebounding and scoring defense. There's a two on the inside from Dorka Juhas, who has eight points to go along with seven rebounds. Doyle back quickly. And Dorka Juhas almost took the bun off of Patty's head on that one. She wanted that rebound. Wasn't it fun talking with Dorka Juhas today? We didn't really seek her out. She just came over at the end of practice and wanted to hang out and chat. Oh, yeah, that's my buddy. I, uh, these freshmen are just so confident on and off the floor. I love it. Well, we will step aside with 4.37 to go. We'll talk more about the National Player of the Year conversation when we come back. Between Iowa and Ohio State in just a second. But just a reminder that after this game, we have our tip off show presented by Autos Owners Insurance. And on the lineup today, we have Ohio State's late run pushes them past Indiana. The journey's inside look at Iowa's Jordan Bohannon. And then Dave Revson, Stephen Bardo, and Mike DeCourcy will preview Northwestern at number 20, Iowa. But for now, we go back to Mike and Christy in Columbus. fans right here on BTN with Iowa in Columbus up by 20 on Ohio State. Well, this has been the week for Megan Gustafson. 41 on Thursday against a ranked team in Michigan State. 27 more today to go with, oh, just 29 rebounds, too. <laughs> I mean, just phenomenal effectiveness and impactful play by Megan Gustafson, the senior. She has just been amazing in terms of how efficient she has played the basketball game. 70% from the floor coming in, 77% from the free throw line, and has made the only three that she's taken this season. So she is across the board, one of the most effective players playing the game this season, and I'm talking men or women included. Uh, she has just been outstanding. And she has been a joy to watch and cover, too, over the course of her four-year career. 77 career double-doubles for Gustafson. If it feels like we've said a lot about her, it's because it warrants it. No post player in the history of women's college basketball has averaged the numbers that she's currently averaging between points per game, rebounds per game, and field goal percentage. No one. Well, you have to respect that. And, you know, when other players are, are being spoken about as being the best in this, the best in that, but overall, you have to look at the well-rounded effort that Megan Gustafson has presented on the court. So if someone is a high volume shooter, so say somebody takes 40 shots a game and they average 20 points, I mean, is that efficient? No, it's not. But Gustafson can take 24 shots, make 17 of them, and get a double-double on a consistent basis. Look at these other players in conference play as well. They've just been consistent. And across the board, 
productive. So it's not just about your bucket. So I don't want kids to be out there thinking, oh, I need to get more points and then I can be the best player. That's not the best player. Your best players are the best in terms of their plus minus efficiency on the floor. Not how many buckets they get. How many stops do you have? How many rebounds do you get? How many block shots do you get? It's not just about your point production. Jonas scores off the window for Ohio State. Down by 16 with less than four to go. That's where we were talking about a, a most valuable player. The most valuable player is a player who does everything that they can to help the team. Outside of scoring points, if you can take the points off the board, is your cupboard empty or do you still have things in there that you are giving to the team to help? So if the answer is yes to that, which Megan Gustafson can say yes to, she's got a lot in the cupboard that is more than just her point production. Davis, no good, but an offensive rebound and a fresh 30 thanks to Logan Cook. So we talked about the Naismith. Megan Gustafson is one of 20 on the late season list for the Wooden Award as well. Where do you think she stacks up with the names like Asia Dirk, Arike Agumbawale, Sabrina Ionescu? Those are some of the biggest names in this sport. Well, I'd like to see like an all-star game with, all, <laughs> with <laughs> all of those players. And it, it's just tough to choose one because we're talking apples and oranges as another and one for Iowa. But it's apples and oranges, you know, you're saying, you know, Arike Agumbawale, wow, the clutch play that she had and in both of the games in the Final Four last year for Notre Dame. And, and it's just hard to choose just one. But you can't leave Megan Gustafson out of the conversation. You see Stewart right there finishing with contact and looking for the free throw here to complete the three-point play. Solid all-around day for Anna Stewart, the partner to Gustafson in the front. Kevin McGuff made the point to us today about Megan Gustafson that if she played for UConn or if she played for a Notre Dame, he thinks no doubt that's who would be the National Player of the Year. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's tough. It's tough, you know, when you, you don't hear her name enough or when you do hear it, it's not talked about the way it should be talked about in terms of respect. And she has put in so much hard work. She studied the game of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar freshman year to study the mechanics as she gets a swipe there on the freshman Dorka Juhas for the steal. So she's a student of the game and she has evolved over the course of her career. So give her that credit. Why, why would you hold back giving someone like that who has really honed their craft and become the most impactful player on the court this season in college basketball? Doyle scores and draws a foul. Davis giving the, the strong woman two arm strength pose <laughs> after this play. A little curl action off the double screen at the elbow and then contact on the finish. I like that plate design, huh? Gustafson follows up Doyle's miss. Well, you got to put a body on somebody and maintain the contact on the offensive boards that Kevin McGuff just folds his arms after that because you have inside position on the free throw line. You can't give that up. Kroon, who was so good in the first half, she draws a foul and prompts a grimace from Megan Gustafson. Well, Gustafson and the Hawkeyes will face off with Illinois on Thursday, and the Illini today got a win at home against Wisconsin. And then a week from today, the big one against Maryland. Right now, the number 10 team in the country with 11 conference wins now after today's victory. Yeah, and they've, they've played extremely well. During the Big Ten conference play, they had a couple of losses there to Rutgers and Michigan State. But I tell you what, they're a young team. Kyla Charles doing everything she can to lead that squad in so many different statistical categories. Taylor Mikesell nailing the most threes, not just for freshmen in the Big Ten conference, but overall in the league. And that's just so impressive. And Shakira Austin on the interior just having a block party every game. The defensive awareness of that freshman has been impressive. So fun to watch Maryland play. Yeah, that's something that Brenda Fries has talked about with us throughout the season. That team is going to keep ascending because there is youth. They're coming together when you have freshmen like Austin and Mike Sell playing so many minutes. They're going to keep getting better as the year goes. Right. You have a glue player, in Stephanie Jones, who's in there doing the dirty work, getting the boards. And you look at the stat line, and she has a double-double. So the balance of Maryland is also something that's been impressive to see as well. well. The shot clock is winding down here for Ohio State. 
Patty off the shot fake. Blocked by Stewart, but foul is called on Hannah Stewart, her fourth. Well, we talked about Rutgers. That's where Ohio State goes to next on Thursday for Kevin McGuff's team. And that's one of two matchups with the Scarlet Knights still looming on the schedule for the Buckeyes. Yeah, and they know they're going to have a defensive battle against a team like Rutgers. See Vivian Stringer, over a thousand wins now in her illustrious career that spans over four decades in the women's game. Coach three different squads to go to the Final Four. And it's just been fun to, to follow along her career and be inspired by everything that she's done for the game as well. You might have heard Elise and Bobby talking about it at halftime that the defense always gets a lot of attention for Rutgers. The offense and the three-point shooting has been a lot better this season, but right now they're they're trying to find some of that offensive flow. Yeah, they're trying to find some offensive flow, and you know, Caitlin Jenkins now going to miss some time for them and definitely suspended. So that's going to change what they do in terms of their bench rotation in the post as well. Logan Cook pops out and banks one in. How about that smile from the freshman from Iowa City? <laughs> The bench loves it. Giving her that sa sa is what I like to say. Gives you those chills up the back of your neck when you see stuff like that happen. And the joy from the teammates. And that you just can't bottle that up. That's just something that you show. And on a consistent basis for Iowa, you just see that it's, it's genuine and true. Sonano's got the rebound. Yeah, for Cook, that was just her fourth collegiate make from anywhere on the floor, and they've all been from three-point range. Yeah, lots of love from the teammates on that. There you go. You got the kick out right here, and then the bucket goes off the glass, and she called it, and that's what she said to her teammates running back. Hey, I called that. I called that. Right from the front, too. That's not easy. It's not, you know, the elbows and, you know, the wing area is easier for a bank shot, but lots of smiles and towels swinging by her teammates over there on the bench. And she's also exonerated from any flag she might catch in <laughs> film because she went to chase down what she thought was going to be a miss, she so she was doing her job. It. She followed it. Freshman getting time here for Iowa as the Hawkeyes have pulled away in the second half. Now that third quarter really gave them the separation that they needed, and I think, like again, their defense for Iowa, I think they really picked it up in that regard. They quieted Coombs in terms of her penetration and didn't allow Iowa State to get behind that zone on that back line and committing the center. And they, they went away from that. It was a four-point game at halftime, and Iowa, all it does is outscore Ohio State by 22 in the second half. And with that, the Hawkeyes are now 10-3 and three in the Big Ten, just one game behind Maryland. A nice, strong finish by Iowa in the second half. Ohio State still working to get better every game, is what Kevin McGuff has said. A lot of work to do in terms of staying consistent with that notion, but Iowa on the road right now really making some noise. A casual 70-point week for Megan Gustafson. 41 Thursday, 29 today to go along with 16 rebounds as she ties the Big Ten Conference record for double-doubles with her 77th, equaling her with Jantel Lavender.